Hi, how is everybody? My name is Jennifer Danford. I am the Director of Admissions over at St. Hubert. I wanna first thank each of you for being here today. I'm really excited for this panel. We have some remarkable students here and we have some amazing teachers here that are gonna share you all the great things that St. Hubert has to offer academically. Um, each one of these young ladies are the number one in their class. Um, they're all very involved in the school. Um, we also have our assistant principal here, Mr. Stone Cipher, that's going to be able to talk to you about all the different types of uh, programs we have too. Um, during this time, it's, it's, it's crazy because some kids get really scared when they think about high school and when they think about going into high school classes. Um, the reason why we'd like to do something like this is to kind of give you some information on how the transition from high, from grade school can, to high school can be. Um, there's a lot of support at um, St. Hubert. There's a lot of guidance at St. Hubert and there's a lot of remarkable people at the school that's going to allow you and help you to achieve the success that you are looking to have. So again, thank you for being here. We're really happy to have you here. Um, how this is going to work is each member in the panel is going to say a few words to you, okay? They're gonna talk to you and um, at the end of it, what we'll do is we're gonna open it up to questions and answers. During that time, you can ask us any questions. If there is a certain panel member you'd like me to ask that question to, just let me know. Um, and then we will be closing from there. So we are going to first kick it off with our assistant principal, Mr. Stone Cipher. Good evening. My name is Eric Stonecipher. I'm the assistant principal for academic affairs at St. Hubert's Catholic High School for Girls. Uh, I am very uh, happy that you're all with us here tonight, and I want to talk a little bit about our academic program here at St. Hubert's. Our goal here at St. Hubert's is to prepare each and every young lady um, to be mature, um, active citizens in their church and in their community, and to be active citizens in the world beyond when they graduate high school. We ask each and every one of our girls to challenge themselves and to grow and to become a better person than what they are already. A lot of times our teachers um, encourage our students to think beyond what they are right now, that they need to challenge themselves to make themselves better. We also set up a program to prepare each and every girl for college or trade school or whatever their goals are gonna be um, afterwards between having college partnerships. Also, uh, we are balanced between our science programs and our arts programs, our programs uh, with clothing and textile, um, our programs that we are doing to start with business um, that we have. These are all things that we go through. At the same time, we don't do it in a cookie uh, cutter man, uh, mind frame. What we do is we try to tailor the program that's gonna best work for each and every girl. Right here, a perfect example. All these girls here are number one in their class. That's, a, that's what they have in common. What we celebrate more is some of the things that they don't have in common. One's a cheerleader, one's in band, one's the lead of, uh, of, the, of the play. Um, different things that they do academically. I am gonna use both um, Aaron and Michaela as an example of this. Both of them are outstanding students. They should be extremely proud of what they're going to do. And uh, one of the programs we have is what's known as our diocesan scholar program. Um, Aaron made the decision that for her, it wasn't gonna be the best thing for her to achieve her goals and things like that, which is perfectly fine. She was able to find what worked out for her to go through. Michaela has now decided next year that she's going to do four classes. Uh, she's going to do classes at Holy Family University for half the day as a senior and then take classes back um, at St. Hubert's. So what's important is each one of our young ladies is having their goal met um, with them. On top of preparing for college, we have on top of our Adasis and Scholar program, we also have our college partnerships. We have a partnership with Holy Family University, Manor College, and Newman University. Holy Family, we offer a class in um, uh, college writing. It's a basic freshman uh, writing course that pretty much all colleges have with that. 
it gives students a chance to kind of experience what it's like to take a college class and understand what that freshman introduction um, writing class would be. Uh, with Newman University, we have a public speaking class, which is an outstanding class that gives confidence and education to help our young ladies to learn how to speak in public, how to do job interviews, how to do speeches, how to present themselves, the importance of speaking in the sense of presenting your body language, and the different things that all encompass of being good public speakers. And then finally, we have our partnership with Manor uh, College, which we have a business um, classes with that. We have intro to business and um, introduction to marketing. This it gives them some other ideas. On top of that, we have seven AP courses. We are always looking to expand our program to try to have uh, more AP courses. Both our honors and our CP um, level courses are challenging each and every young lady to prepare them for college and to prepare them to be lifelong learners. What I'd like to end with is this. As we all know, we're dealing right now with the COVID-19. And on March 13th, we all were informed that we now had to go to online instruction. One of the things that stuck with me is as an educator, we are missioned to prepare our young people for a world that doesn't exist yet. That reality came into existence on March 13th for each and every one of us. I'm proud to say that through the transition of the academic team at St. Hubert's and the teachers here at St. Hubert's, we were able to do one day, one day of professional development and then go forward with a complete academic plan to keep the academics going for that true understanding that we are preparing each and every one of our young ladies, not for the world they live in today, but, but for the world that is going to come and that they have the skills that are necessary to adapt to an ever-changing world and that they are prepared to seek out new knowledge and make themselves better each and every day. I thank each and every one of you for coming here tonight and I truly hope to see you all here at St. Hubert's. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Stone Cipher. So next up on our list is Ms. Gora. Hi everyone. Um, welcome to um, welcome to the webinar, uh, Future Bambies and Future Parents of Bambies. Um, my name's Kristen Gora. I teach um, currently teach theology and uh, English language arts, um, and I've also taught algebra uh, to. And I, I'm actually lucky enough to have taught all grade levels um, at Saint Hubert. Um, um, I have. My, my master, I have a Master of Arts in Education from Holy Family and um, Arcadia University is my master's degree. And um, I basically have just a love of learning. And that is why, um, that's what actually brings me excitement at St. Hubert's in the classroom. Um, our students are, they're just problem solvers, they're innovators. And when we talk about that bond um, of an all girls high school, um, I've seen it everywhere. I've seen it in the theology classroom, in the algebra classroom, in our English classroom. Um, they shine the most when, um, you know, they're just given a project to do and um, they get to kind of spread their wings and, and come up with something. Um, I've learned so much from our girls in the classroom. Um, you know, I, um, I, I do, I feel blessed that I can share my faith and at the same time, um, have that uh, freedom of creativity um, in our classrooms that, um, you know, just to do, to do anything. Um, I, I like to think of like when we talk about lifelong learners and learning in the 21st century that um, I'd like to think that I, I'm really uh, preparing these girls to just be critical thinkers and problem solvers and, and leaders um, in our communities and, and beyond. Um, and then just to end, I, you know, I would just like to say that, um, you know, it's just such a great experience being able to teach um, also at my alma mater. Um, I'm, I'm class of 1996. Um, so yeah, so um, it, it's just a great job. Um, and I and I love working with the girls. Thank you so much. Next up is going to be our first student, Kate Patterson. Hi everyone, um, my name is Kate Patterson. I'm a freshman at St. Hubert's. 
Um, along with academic program, I'm also involved with student council, athletes helping athletes, and volleyball and basketball as of my sports. Um, for the academic program at St. Hubert's, from what I've learned so far, it's absolutely amazing. The teachers always encourage us to reject the status quo and try new things that we've never tried before because they think that we will absolutely like them. Um, the teachers always are also there for us no matter what, and they push us hard because they know that we can achieve our goals later in life. They act as our role models inside and outside of the classroom, and we also form great relationships with them, as well as all the students in all of our classes. Um, as a freshman, definitely one big challenge is balancing your time and having time management because going into high school for myself, balancing time was definitely really hard because I started volleyball in the summer. So I had to learn how to balance my time and how to do my schoolwork and hours of studying every night, along with trying to reach out and make new friends and adapt to the school environment. But through that, I had the um, I had the help of a lot of the guidance counselors and a lot of the teachers to guide me along the way. And now I'm very used to the school and my schedule and how to balance my time a lot better. Um, one of my favorite classes would definitely be my world history class. Um, our teacher relates a lot back to us and I feel like that's a lot of what the teachers do too because they understand that a lot of what our outside environment is today is a lot different than it was back in time. So they try to relate to different things that we learn now today just so that it's easier to learn in the classroom. But overall, a lot of my teachers are also amazing and they do that as well. Um, even in the classroom, I've learned a lot more about myself than I would have thought in such a short period of time. I learned that I'm actually very good at learning foreign language, and it was honestly very surprising because I have never looked at a foreign language even in grade school. So that was something I had a lot of enjoyment in. And also, one other thing I've learned is a lot of my interests for later on in life, I definitely want to pursue something in the medical career or business or engineering. Um, in the classroom too, we also use a lot of collaboration and creativity. The teachers like to get our creative juices flowing and they like us to collab with each other, especially in freshman year because it is very scary to meet new people that you've never met before. So we use a lot of that in the classroom, gets our imaginations going, and we can do things that we never thought we could. And also being a Bambi is all part of that, as well as having confidence in yourself and what your capabilities are. That's definitely something that's very important at the school, along with your worth ethic inside and outside of the classroom. And also our sisterhood is something that I've definitely learned to love and that's something I cherish forever. Myself, I'm actually a legacy of two other generations before me. So continuing that legacy was something that was really important for me. And as the course of the school year went by, my freshman class got very, very close because of our common interest with our sisterhood and our school pride. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, next up, we have our art teacher, um, Mrs. Creighton. Hi everybody, welcome. I'm glad you guys could make it today. Uh, I am the fine arts chairperson at St. Hubert. I am also the visual, the studio art teacher. Um, and I would like to talk to you just a little bit about our Arts Academy program that we are developing and moving forward with at our school. Um, just a little background uh, for you all. I just really want to, to have you know this, that um, I taught at St. Hubert for about 15 years and then um, had to leave for a period of time and I decided to come back because I loved the school so much. I love the sisterhood, I love the Bambies, and I can tell you without a doubt, having taught in several other schools, there is no other school like this in the Archdiocese or in the Northeast area. So um, my passion for it, I'm hoping is relaying to you all as I talk to you about what it is that we are doing at St. Hubert, um, I, I think you want to know that our fine arts program is kind of broken up into tiers. We have a music program, a comprehensive 
performing arts program. We also have a comprehensive visual arts program and we have a design program. And then there are several types of electives that you can take under that. We have two AP courses in the art, the studio art and, and art um, department, in addition to these programs. And we do have college partnerships. Uh, and we also have a partnership with the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Um, so just so that you know that the orchestra at St. Hubert has been very well known for many, many years. We have an excellent string program and um, our school has been known for its music program for as long as I can remember. Uh, I would say that 80, 85% of the students that come into that program have never touched an instrument before. And our teachers are so skilled that they get to playing immediately. You learn very quickly and you play immediately and you become a part of an orchestra. Um, there are ensembles, there are performance opportunities, both in-house, in the school, and outside of school as well. Um, they also, we also have a choir, and we have a handbell choir, which is very unique to St. Uh, to, um, to Hubert uh, and other schools, um, where you are uh, learning how to play music with these like brass type bells. Um, and you do not have to be a musician necessarily to join the handbell choir. I actually have art students that are a part of the handbell choir. Uh, the visual arts program, it's kind of broken up into a couple of different tiers. I'm the studio art teacher. So within our classes, uh, we do everything from drawing to painting, to printmaking, to sculpture, collage, and ceramics. I also do teach ceramics as well. Um, and you, uh, we have a partnership with Philadelphia Academy of Fine Arts, Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, where you can take additional classes there if you want to continue to develop your portfolio if you really love art and you want to learn more at, on a college level you can certainly take classes there as well we also have a partnership with philadelphia museum of art where teaching artists can come in and do special projects with you um, you would exhibit in school and outside of school and um, you could stay in the program for four years and build a beautiful portfolio if you wanted to go to school for it eventually then within the art department, we also have a digital design course and the uh, digital design uh, covers the Adobe suite. You learn Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign. You also do a little bit of web designing as well. And um, the teacher start, uh, touches on animation too within that uh, course. So that is definitely an elective that a lot of our students are interested in. We have an AP studio art course for college credit. We also have an AP art history course. course also for college credit, um, you know, uh, hoping that you would do well enough that you would get that college credit. Um, and then we have a, a clothing and textile course, which infuses a little bit of fashion design into it. So you would learn how to uh, create your own thing. You'd learn how to use a sewing machine, you'd learn how to work with patterns, and you would learn how to uh, start to design and make your own clothing, you know, after having learned the steps that lead to that. Um, so we really are moving in a direction where we are, are we would like to do some cross curricular things. Uh, we have already started uh, collaborating with other teachers in other departments, discussing types of projects that we could do together. Um, and we are moving toward a STEAM initiative, you know, kind of a, a STEAM direction where we're blending, you know, math and science and art all together. So we, we have a lot of great ideas moving forward and we uh, have already started that process. And um, a lot of people want to know, you know, what if I, I'm not good at drawing or what if I'm not good, I'm, I've never touched an instrument before. We will teach you. You know, if you have an interest in it and you, you want to not know what it's all about, come in, take the courses, see how you like it. Um, nine times out of 10, kids are surprised at how well they do. It's not like a grade school course. You know, high school music and studio courses are, are a little bit different. We cultivate you and we work with you and we train you. So um, don't be worried about that. If you have the interest, if the interest is there, I would definitely consider taking uh, one of our courses, either a music or an art course. Um, there's two possibilities. You could take a full year course in music or art, or you would take a half year course, which is a related arts survey course. And all that is really is just um, kind of like touches the surface of a little bit of art and a little bit of music. And it's only a half a year. The art one foundation course would be a full year and the music one, the instrumental music one foundation course would also be a full year. 
Um, so, you know, as always, you can send and ask questions and I can answer them at the end of the session. But hopefully you'll think about, um, you know, possibly creating, having yourself have a well-rounded roster and a well-rounded program where, you know, you're in your academics, but you want to have your creative visual voice. And that's what happens when students need their personal voice and they don't know how to do it in other subjects, they'll do it through art and music. So keep that in mind as you're making your decisions that we would cultivate, cultivate that for you. But I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mrs. Creighton. So next up is our next student. It's gonna be Sophia Cologne. Hi everyone. So I'm a sophomore here at St. Hubert and I'm involved in a lot. Um, just to name a few, I'm involved in field hockey, the orchestra, string council, uh, I'm in the chorus, and I did the fall musical. There's a lot of stuff, but I also have a job on the weekends. So it's tough to manage all that um, and still, you know, get to sleep and have time with my family, make some new friends. But I think the key to time management for me was definitely persistence. Um, you have to push through it. Even if you don't feel like studying, sometimes you know that it's the best for you and that once this is all over, it'll just be a breeze and you'll have that time to yourself. Um, just to quickly stop about chain, uh, chamber ensemble, uh, I've played cello since like sixth grade and this ensemble has allowed me to visit new places and see many new people and play at venues that I never would have dreamed of being at. Like, for example, we visited the Union League and um, I've been there quite a lot downtown. So it's definitely great and I would recommend it to anyone. Um, during this COVID time, it, things have been stressful <laughs> for everyone, especially, but um, I think the school has done a great job managing it. They um, have kept us in the loop with so many things, and it really feels like we're with them, in a sense. This has made our sisterhood so much stronger. Just all these girls, it really gives us a chance to bond more than we ever would at school. So yeah, I hope you're all doing well, um, and stay strong. Thank you so much, Sophia. Uh, next up is our science teacher, Mr. Maslock. Sorry, mouse froze. Yes, uh, I'm Mr. Maslick. I teach science at St. Hubert's. Everything I was going to say about the students, Kate already said, so I don't have to cover that. Um, everything about the arts, Ms. Creighton already said. We have um, a very excellent science program at St. Hubert's. I mean, everybody coming in kind of starts at the same spot. You take physics, you take biology, then you go to chemistry. But beyond that, we have lots of electives. Um, and while science isn't necessarily something you have to take for four years, I'm always amazed at every year how many girls take that fourth year of science, if not two sciences, whether they squeeze it into their junior year or they just take two their senior year. Um, and so that's also allowed me to see a lot of my students like two or three or four, even sometimes four years. Four years is a stretch, but at least three years moving through, which just gets you to see them, you know, how they grow and you have that student who maybe didn't like science or wasn't into physics, which I totally understand. Um, but then they have biology and then take anatomy or take, we had astronomy started a couple years ago, which is not a class that's uh, common at many of the high schools in the archdiocese. And that just happened. I don't want to say as a fluke, but it was a fluke. It was actually an anatomy class and a girl, I think I'd mentioned something about a meteor shower and then someone said, oh, we should have astronomy. I said, okay, well, then go ask for astronomy. Well, they did, and now we have it, so, and I teach it. <laughs> so um, a lot of classes, all of the classes come with labs, so there's a lot of hands-on work. So I keep looking down at myself and not at the dot, my bad. Um, so like for all, really all of the sciences, except for astronomy, uh, there's like two out of six days you're in lab, you get your hands into stuff, you're either playing with chemicals and chemistry, or uh, dissecting things in anatomy, uh, you know, doing all kinds of experiments in biology. Just there's a lot of hands-on, a lot of classroom work, and it's 
for me, I think it's a lot of fun, but it's also my background. I guess I should have started with that. Biology is my background, but I've taught, I think, every science subject at the building. Um, but biology and anatomy are usually my the two stronger ones, and astronomy. So it's just a great program, and it's just great to see, you know, students come in who, again, really not a lot of interest in science, then turn that around and, and really take interest in it, and then take more and more classes in it. And I think that's just a, and in science, regardless of the subject matter, you're learning skills that move forward for anything. I mean, it's problem solving, it's asking questions, it's observing everything around you. I mean, and that works in any, any subject of science, um, especially the problem solving. And it's also a lot of collaboration. I mean, that's why we have the labs. You work with you know, fellow students and you know, learn how to be a, a team player, whether that be the leader of the team, someone who just pitches in, someone you know, who's asking the questions, fact checking, whatever it is. Um, and so, man, I feel like I'm rambling. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I got for science. <laughs> Hopefully there'll be questions at the end. Thank you so much, Mr. Maslock. Yeah. So next up, we have um, our junior, Michaela Egoff. Hi, everybody. My name is Michaela Egoff. Um, so aside from all the academic aspects of St. Hubert, um, I'm involved with a lot of different things. I like to keep myself busy. So I'm a very artistic person, so I am in choir. Um, I was just the lead in our fall musical, and I also do the musicals at Father Judge. Um, I'm a junior officer for any deaf, and I'm also a band the ambassador. So if you came to any of the open houses or shadowed or visitation day, you might have saw me and I might have saw you. And uh, that's one of my favorite parts. I'm glad I get to be part of that. Um, but when I was coming into St. Hubert, I came from a charter school. I actually came from PAX. Someone said they're from there. So shout out to you. But I was nervous because I knew that these people went to a Catholic grade school their entire lives. They knew these people. And I was like, oh my goodness, am I going to be, I feel out of place? Am I going to feel behind in my academics? And I was nervous, like, will I have to repeat these math classes? That's what I was especially nervous about, because I liked math a lot, math and science. And I wanted to make sure that I could, you know, skip that course that I took and make sure I get it. And we worked everything out. And that's what's so great about, um, like Mr. Jones ever said, they really cater to each student's needs. And so I was concerned that I have to retake that math and they didn't, they worked it out, they fit it in my schedule. And I got to take um, a class with, when I was a freshman, sophomore, with a few other classmates of my grade. And they do that throughout the year. So you know, like freshman year, you don't have that much uh, liberty with your schedule because you have to get the assigned courses. By the time you're a junior and senior, the teachers help prepare you of, figure out what your interests are so you know what classes you want to take. And if you don't know, there's a guidance counselor they can meet with and help you figure out what would be best for you. I know last year I met with Mr. Stone's I for like, I made him sit with me like three times at lunch. And he took the time out of his day to come sit with me because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. There were all these different classes and I was just overwhelmed and I was like, I don't know if I want to take AP art. I don't know if I want to double science. I don't know what to do. I was like, I, I don't know what I'm gonna, if I take this, then what am I going to take senior year? And it was just all, and he sat me down. And he's like, listen, come on, we're good at it. And we just figured it out. And then I ended up taking AP art history with Ms. Creighton, as she mentioned earlier. And that doesn't stop on the like overall guidance aspect but then it's also the teachers inside who are helping you and figuring out what works best for you and like study habits and all that stuff so I know AP art that was quite challenging figuring out how to study for that class because that's a lot of memorization and Ms. Crane really worked with us because at first we were trying to figure out what would be best to study all this information and we went with different like powerpoints we went with different worksheets and we decided that we figured out Quizlets worked best for us. And so Ms. Creighton, she had a few Quizlets. She like adapted her teaching style because she knows that teachers have different teaching styles and students have different learning styles. So the teachers really um, are accepting of all the different things. As long as you're getting your work done, they're really there to help you out. And I've just 
I'm appreciative of all the opportunities I got. I've been taking, I had three AP classes so far. One will be next year. And like Mr. Jones said, mentioned earlier, I'm a DAS and scholar. So I'll be taking four college classes next year at Holy Family. I just registered for them today, actually. They just got approved. So I'm really excited about that because I want to go into the medical field, so I'll have a lot of school ahead of me. And so this gives me a chance to get a head start on some of those college classes and get a college feel while still having the senior high school experience. So I'm really, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michaela. Um, next up is our senior, Erin Fitzpatrick. Hi everyone, I'm Erin Fitzpatrick. I'm currently a senior at St. Hubert. I was involved in many extracurricular activities um, throughout my time here, 10 clubs actually, but my main roles were as the Vice President of National Honor Society, a student council representative, and a member of the cheerleading program all four years. Um, my experience over the past four years has been amazing, both inside and outside of the classroom. And I always feel like the faculty and staff at St. Hubert were extremely helpful whenever I needed them to be. Um, as a student in the honors and AP curriculums, I always felt like my teachers challenged me to reach my full academic potential. And I definitely feel like this has prepared me for my future. Next year, I'll be attending Temple University in an accelerated physical therapy track. And I know that um, all of my preparation at St. Hubert will definitely help me excel there. Something that I feel is really important to note is that as a student at St. Hubert, I've taken five AP level courses since my sophomore year. And this year I also take a business and marketing class um, through Manor College. So a professor from the school comes to St. Hubert and teaches in our classroom setting. Because of this, I'll be starting college with 24 credits. And just to give you some perspective on that, uh, most schools require about 30 credits per year. So that's a lot. Um, and something else I wanted to touch on as vice president of NHS, during my senior year, I organized all of the tutoring for other students. So if you ever struggle in a subject, um, you could come to me and I would set you up with another student who was from NHS who was comfortable tutoring in a certain area or I would help you. For the most part, we would usually help students um, who need help in math classes, but we help in science and language as well. And something else I would even do if somebody emailed me and said like, hey, could you maybe proofread my paper or see if I should add anything to this project, um, they could just send it over. So we would really help with everything we could. So whether you're really strong in a certain area or you might struggle a little bit, you'll always have um, the help that you need. Thank you so much, Erin. She's also the salutatorian this year for the class of 2020. So congratulations. Actually, actually Val Victorian. Val Victorian. I get those mixed up. Val Victorian. Sorry. Val Victorian for the class of 2020. Sorry about that. So um, what we're going to do, and they said congratulations, Erin. Congratulations. Um, thank you to all of our panelists for uh, talking to our, to our participants today. What we would like to do now is if you can see below, there's gonna be a little icon that says Q&A. Um, you, can, you can send your, your questions there and I will be able to give it to our panelists. So if you have any questions, please put them down below where it says Q&A. And in the meantime, in the meantime, um, the one thing that I love about St. Hubert and what I've seen with these young ladies is the growth that they um, develop throughout the four years. I remember meeting every single one of these young ladies throughout the admissions process and seeing where they are today and how much they've grown into these confident young women is, is simply amazing. So um, it, that's the great part about seeing the girls going throughout the, the school year. Looks like we have a question coming through. Will there be any tests for scholarships? That's from Angelina Tang. Um, I will have Michaela, since you know 
this, this question, why don't you talk about the scholarship exams that we normally have in the fall? So for any incoming student, um, when you're in eighth grade, you can take a scholarship exam. Uh, most, all the RSAC school have it and most private Catholic schools have them as well. And you can take them as many as you want. I suggest taking as many, even if you're unsure about a school, just because you never know how it's gonna turn out. And you can always use the practice because they're similar, but they're all different. And so the more you take them, the more you'll improve. And so then they use the scores of those and give off scholarships. But to prepare, in seventh grade, they also have practice exams. And those are very good to go to because it gives you a sense of what that's going to be like. So you can, when you take it your eighth grade year, get the highest score possible so you can get the most scholarships possible. And so that's what I'm pretty, I assume all of us took the scholarship exams when we were coming in as freshmen. And I assume we all did good. So. Yeah. Also, too, I'm going to add add to that, um, Michaela. Um, since um, we were unable to have that seventh grade practice practice exam this spring, I've been letting families know. I highly recommend going you want going on Amazon. If you go on Amazon, there's the HSPT workbooks, and that's the exam. That's where we get our exam. It's the high school placement test where you can go on Amazon and you can find a workbook to help you prepare for that standardized test in the fall, okay? Also with the standardized test in the fall, we normally offer it three times. And I tell that, um, I also um, tell students, don't get nervous before you take that scholarship exam, okay? Um, the great thing about that scholarship exam, it's, it's to see if you'll be able to receive an academic scholarship, but then on the flip side of it, it's also going to help Mr. Stone Cipher academically place you in your proper track. Okay, um, so don't be afraid to take that, and make sure you do take that because it's going to always also help you. Um, another question from Allie Coleman is, "What is involved in joining the Bandy Ambassador?" That's from Allie Coleman. Uh, Michaela, would you be able to answer that, please? So, um, what's coming? Yeah, joining. I'll talk about joining and what it's like to being a part of it in general. So, when you go to join Bambi Ambassador, um, when you come to join Bambi Ambassador, you have to, it's like an application. And so, you fill out the paperwork, you have to get teacher's recommendation. It's different than student council. Student council is you're voted by your peers, your grade, and then the votes, and then how you get elected. Whereas a Bandy ambassador is you have to be, you have to go through an application pro pro process. <laughs> and so you fill out your application, your inter and then you'll interview with Ms. Stanford and Ms. Zinsky, and Ms. Stanford runs it. And so you go through that and you have to get recommendations and then she chooses who will be on it. There's usually like 15 to 20 girls from each grade. And then once you're a part of it, I just actually submitted my application for next year, senior year, Bambi Ambassadors. Um, but then once you're part of it, we help out at open houses, we run visitation day, we go visit some of your grade schools for power lunches and student school fairs and all that good stuff and also work with all the alumni. And yeah, so it's one of my favorite things at St. Hubert. Ms. Dansford, your mic is not on. <laughs> You're still muted. Hey, there you go. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, is there any other questions that we that we have for our panelists? I know uh, when we first came in, there were a couple of students that were interested in art and also interested in science. Did you have any questions for um, for the uh, teachers? Um, just real quick, while we're waiting for that, could you put or just chat up that um that book that came up in the questions? Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna so I'm gonna put in the chat where you can get that book, okay? It's through HSPT and you can 
get you can get it on Amazon. Okay, so if you go on HSP, if you uh, go on Amazon and type in HSPT, there should be workbooks in there and everything. And that can also help you. I was just wondering if I could just uh, say two things. Yes, yes. Uh, number one, there is an art scholarship. Um, yes. And I actually think we're giving out two this year mm -hmm. um, for anybody that is interested in, in looking into that. Um, and you would be basically sending in some samples of your artwork. And we, uh, we do try to uh, be as fair and you know, equitable as we can when, when we are um, deciding how to give those scholarships out. It's not just something that I look at it and I decide. I mean, I, there are a panel of people that take a look at it. Um, and the second thing that was touched on earlier that I really wanted to, to drive home with you, um, one of the things that I know has been a constant at St. Hubert is that one-on-one -on -one guidance and that one-on-one -on -one direction. Um, you really, we as the teachers really do try to help you make the best decisions possible for your rosters, for your coursework, for your future. Um, and it doesn't just stop with the teachers. There are, there are staff members and there are counselors that really want to see you develop as the whole person. Uh, so I, I feel very, very strongly and I can confidently say that you would be guided along the way no matter where you sit academically. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously the panel is our top kids and they're, they're, they're wonderful and they represent a, a, a cross section of possible, possible experiences at St. Hubert. Mm -hmm. But we work with every student and we try to guide every student. We try to help every student grow to the, be the best possible person and, and academic student as they, they possibly could, can be, and artist, musician, et cetera. So I just wanted to throw that in there uh, just so that there's an understanding that uh, there's just kind of that guidance that happens along the way for, for any student that comes into our building. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Creighton. There was a question that came through um, from Angelina Tang. What are some events at St. Hubert? What are some events? So what student would like to talk about some of the events that are at St. Hubert? Uh, Aaron? So we have a ton of events. Um, a lot of the events in school, um, I'm sure you've heard about Susie Hubert Day before. That's our spirit day. Uh, you compete against the other homerooms in your class. So basically, once you start school up until the week of Thanksgiving, which is when Susie Hubert Day is, you're working with your homeroom to prepare um, a song and dance and things like that. It's super fun. And that's how, especially freshman year, you get closer to the girls around you. It's great. Um, and then depending on what extracurricular activities you're involved in, that'll be uh, like guide you through the different events you'll be doing. So I was on student council and um, the girls on Bambi Ambassador would also participate in the events like open house and going to um, lunches at the grade schools and things like that and then each sports team um they have their own like practices and things it really depends on what you're involved in um and i definitely recommend doing as many activities as you possibly can especially freshman year because you might be scared and think i'm not going to like this if you don't like it then you don't join it again sophomore year but if you end up loving it you'll make some of the best friends um Thank you so much, Erin. A couple of other events that um, we do too is Faculty Follies. We do that every year, which is awesome and so much fun. Um, we also have a talent show where a lot of the girls um, can come up and showcase their, spare, uh, their, their talent. The one thing I love about the talent show is that you see girls cheering for one another. They, they, they are clapping and yelling and encouraging those girls who are on stage showing off their talent. So there's a lot of different events throughout the year that we have, even throughout the month too, so. And I, I think we, we do uh, some fundraising events too. There's yeah. like that thon style, the dance-a-thon that happens mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, and various things uh, to raise money to go toward charities and cancer research mm -hmm. um, and uh, environmental concerns, et cetera. 
We had a Voices of Light assembly too. We've done that too. Um, we've also, there's a, there's a lot of different things. And that's the one thing, when you get into high school, um, the transition from your, from grade school to high school, there's so many other doors that open up and there's so many new things that you can do. And there's so many new things that you can try. And I, I always tell prospective families this and, and students, you're gonna have your tribe. You're gonna have your academic tribe and you're gonna have your extracurricular tribe and you're gonna have your sports tribe. There's something for everybody. And there's a path for everybody at St. Hubert. Um, you can be yourself. You can be your authentic, unique self. And that's the great thing about being in that all girls environment. Um, there was another question from, um, what are some of the electives you can take at St. Hubert? Um, why don't we have, Sophia, can you talk about some of the, have you taken any, no, Michaela or Aaron, since you've taken some electives already. Who's going to answer that? I can. Sorry, okay. I have a lag. That's okay. So during your freshman and sophomore year, you don't really have that many electives for the most part because there are required courses that everybody in the whole entire RCIC has to take. Um, so during your junior and senior year, that's when you have a lot more flexibility with picking some of your courses. So um, some of the electives that I took junior year were an AP art history course. I also took anatomy in um, as a science elective. Um, and then this year I took, sorry, I took a um, AP or an AP statistics course, which isn't a required math course, but I thought that it would help me when preparing for um, the classes I'll have to take in college. So those are every um, subject level has different electives you can take and I know we mentioned for science that you have to take biology physics and chemistry but other than that you also have anatomy to choose from or astronomy as electives um, for the math department you have to take algebra one and two as well as geometry but I've also taken trigonometry slash pre-calc uh, during my junior year and then statistics this year and calculus would have been an option if I wanted to take that. I can't hear you, Aaron. Good. You're breaking up. I can't hear you. All right, I'm gonna add, we couldn't hear you. I'm gonna add more to, to what um, Aaron was saying. Actually, uh, Ms. Stanford, do you want me to cover that yeah, real quick? Please, yes. Uh, with that, so Aaron did a really good job of kind of covering a lot of the electives that we have at St. Hubert's and really it is within the junior and senior year where those electives come in. Um, all, all our college um, partnerships are, are electives with that and all of them are introduced uh, in the junior year and you can possibly take them the senior year. So as I said, the, the college writing course, the public speaking course, the uh, intro to business, the principles of marketing, class and, and we, we keep working those with our college partnerships. Uh, another elective that normally gets offered in the junior year and you can normally take two years of that is our clothing and textile. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Creighton had talked about that earlier as that part of the fine arts department. Uh, this gives uh, young ladies the chance that yes they understand they learn sewing and things like that but they get a chance to um, learn a little bit about design and, and, and how uh, that works and the creation of things. And ideally, they, they create enough stuff so that, that we can have a fashion show uh, to show off the work that they've done um, with that. Um, of course, in the, in the arts uh, department, we, we do have the um, uh, digital arts, and we also have the AP, uh, AP art history. Um, and then, of course, the upper level art classes will all go with that. Uh, we have creative writing for freshmen, which is a little bit of elective. It's something that's unique to us compared to a lot of the other schools in the archdiocese, but I have started to learn that some of the other schools have, have been copying us for that creative writing class. Um, that uh, what will happen is if you happen to take the related arts, we normally have a creative writing class, which is really a good, um, we found that to be very uh, good for our freshmen because um, it does two things. One, it helps them work on kind of some of their basic writing skills, 
but because it's not um, more of a serious writing, because it, it's um, creative writing, they can kind of put their feelings down on paper. They can kind of reflect on different things. Uh, I know I've talked with the teacher that has taught that creative writing class, and there, there's a lot of things that has been good for the girls to do that class because they get to put things on paper that they might be feeling, might be thinking about, and they just don't know how to express it any other way um, to, to go with that. I know in social studies, uh, when you get into your senior year, there are, uh, we have AP physics, we, uh, not AP physics, AP psychology, um, and uh, CP psychology. We also have comparative government. We also have a world, uh, a world religions and um, Holocaust class, uh, which you learn about the Holocaust and the different things that happen with genocide and the different world religions um, around the world. Also in um, health, uh, we have a nutrition and child development class, uh, which is normally something that seniors are very interested in. Um, science, of course, we have anatomy, we have the astronomy, uh, we have uh, honors physics, uh, which would be a college-based physics with that. And as Aaron had said uh, before, in math, we have statistics, and we have also AP calculus, mm -hmm. uh, different things like that. So we have a, a wide variety. I also want to echo kind of what Mr. Maslock had said earlier, you know, um, if there's an elective and there's enough of a demand for it and students have come up, we'll look into it. If, if we can do it, we will. Uh, we'll sit down, we'll be honest. Um, so this is really important and we kind of keep that all in, in, in mind. Uh, I, I want you all to know, and I, I know Michaela had said it and Mrs. Creighton had said it, we do really try to work with each individual student to pick what's gonna be the best roster for them. Um, I know, believe it or not, we, we had to do roster selection during the pandemic and things like that. The number one thing I missed, the number one thing I missed personally is going to the cafeteria and sitting down with students to talk about their rosters. I truly did miss that because it excites me to see what their passions are and what their goals are and to make sure that we're meeting their needs so they can have the things that they want to do because we really work on a concept that we are goal oriented. Well, part of our job as a school is to help support those goals so that these girls can reach beyond where they even believe they can go. And I can I just add to that too, keep in mind, I know Mrs. Creighton add, uh, we can always know you can either, you can take art and music off four years as well. Um, so I always, tells uh, prospective students too, don't be afraid to try something new. Get out of your comfort zone and try something new, okay? Because that's where you see the magic happening and that's where you see yourself grow is when you try something new. Um, Mr. Maslock, there's somebody here that was asking, what science classes do you teach? I saw that, I was like, oh. Um, <laughs> typically in a normal year, biology, anatomy, physiology, and astronomy but I have also taught chemistry, physics, environmental science, related arts for about two or three years. <laughs> um, I think that's all the sciences, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> but typically biology, anatomy, and astronomy. Um, no one's locked into a, a definite class, but we kind of all have our thing, and so you kind of usually get your thing, oh. which is nice. Fun fact, Mr. Maz is also an artist and a musician. Just had to throw that in there. <laughs> the only thing I'm not is an athlete. <laughs> I mean, not super good. <laughs> Another question we have are what are some, this is from Angelina, um, and her question is, what are some language lessons, classes, does St. Hubert's have? So who would like to talk about the languages that St. Hubert's has? You can raise your hand. Okay, Kate. So at St. Hubert's, we have three major languages. It's Spanish, French, and Italian. Um, for Spanish and French, you can take four years, but you're only really required to take two years, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, myself, I take Spanish, and I'm planning on trying to take it all four years if I can, if it's in my roster. For Italian, I think they only offer it for two years. I think. Sorry. I'm like, 
Um, yeah, so um, in Spanish and French one and Italian one, we basically learn um, the basics. So colors, numbers, basic verbs. Right now we are learning about clothing and how to say school, like different school supplies, things like that. And then um, after that, you just continue with Spanish two. And then after that, Spanish three and four. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kate. Let's see. Do we have any other questions? Let me check. Okay. Okay. So a couple of things before, before we leave tonight. Um, again, I want to thank each of you for being here today as our panelists. And I also want to thank the families at home for taking time out on this beautiful day to listen to all the great things that St. Hubert has to offer. Um, the next coming weeks, we're going to have quite a few webinars. Next week, we are going to be having our athletic webinar. We're going to have all of the coaches on this, um, and I think along with some students, to talk about our 14 varsity sports. That is going to be on May. Let me just make sure I have the date right. Get my calendar up here. That's going to be on May 14th. And that's also the day before Mrs. Danford's birthday. <laughs> so May 14th is going to be the athletic webinar. And then the following week, which is going to be on May 20th, is going to be our activities webinar. So the activities webinar is going to have theater on there. It's going to have um, art on there, orchestra. We're going to talk all about all of the great activities that St. Hubert has to offer. So again, there's something for everybody that the girls can get involved with. Um, also, um, we are still accepting applications too for incoming freshmen um, for the class of 2024. I'm also scheduling like virtual meet and greets if any family has uh, ever wants to have like a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. Um, we are also going to be doing virtual shadow days as well too. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up in the next in the next few weeks. Um, and then in the fall, we're going to always have our fall open house where you can physically come back into the school and you can just see all of the great classrooms and see all of the students as well. So again, I want to thank you all for being here today. And um, if you do have any questions, I'm going to put my email in the chat, okay? My email is right in the chat. It's jdanford at puberts.org. I check my email constantly. Um, but again, thank you everybody for being here tonight. Um, have a great afternoon and a beautiful weekend. And for all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day on Sunday. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Yes, happy Mother's Day, moms. Thank you. Happy yes. Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all. Thank you, girls. You guys did awesome.